Are there things that can hinder ascension? Yeah, there really are. This is going to be a straight talking conversation. So stick with it. It's not, however, about bad news and oh my gosh, life is over. I'm never going to ascend. I'm doomed. It's, it's not that kind of conversation at all. As much as I'm going to say to you, yeah, truthfully, there are things that can make ascension harder because there are. We're going to talk about that. But more importantly, we're going to talk about hardship. And what is this mean? Tality on the planet right now that says, look, if life is not like my Amazon shopping basket where I put things in that I want and then they're delivered and it's all easy and seamless. And if I happen to get something I don't want, then I just send it back and somebody even comes to collect it. In other words, I don't have to put myself out. It's all automated. It's all seamless. We've been led to believe that that's what life should look like. And that if it doesn't, either we're wrong or we've done something wrong. But that is not the truth and it's never been the truth. There are people out there so devoted to living a life free of chaos that when chaos happens, they want to run away. But you're not here to run. You're here to rise. You're not here to escape. You're here to embrace life. So the warrior's journey, which is the journey that you are on right now, requires you to face everything, including sometimes really difficult, uncomfortable conversations. Are there things that can hinder your ascension? Yeah, one of them is medication. And I know when I talk about this, people start freaking out. They go, oh, well, there you go. That's me. Done. Doomed. I'm on medication. Maybe it's anti-anxiety, antidepressants, whatever it might be. Just because I say to you that something can make ascension harder does not mean it's impossible. It means the warrior is going to be called forth. Instead of giving up and going, well, I'm doomed, it's all over for me now, there's got to be something in you that gets ignited. There's got to be something in you that gets excited and says, well, baby, if this is going to be difficult more than expected, then bring it because I'm here to ascend or to be the spiritual warrior or to find the light within me. And maybe just maybe it's the hardship that brings that light to the surface. In 2016, my life fully, properly fell apart, fell to pieces, cut to little shreds and ribbons lying on the floor. Difficulty deluxe, difficulty every which way you turned. Baby, it was rough. But do you know what? It carved the warrior. It chiseled the warrior out from where it was stuck within me. It brought out my power, my tenacity, my perseverance. It brought something out that I don't know if it could have been brought out if it wasn't for that dire hardship that I went through. Hardship is not the end. It doesn't mean that you're doomed. So when I say to you, there are things that can make ascension more difficult, that's all it means. I'm not saying, well, now it's impossible. It's all over for you. And I know that there are people out there who do say that. There are people out there who say, look, if you've had the jabberoo, you're not going to ascend. I don't believe that, but I do believe that it will make your life harder. In the same way that I can quite honestly say to you, I've been on medication for all my life. For all my life, I've needed medication to breathe properly. I have asthma, pretty severe asthma. I've been on cortisone. I've been on steroids. I've been on stuff to keep my lungs open and keep me breathing that I don't even want to know the side effects of. But I had to be on that stuff. It was quite literally, for many, many years of my life, a matter of survival. So there will be things that you might ingest. There will be things that you might put into your body. You see, you're not meant to be pristine and pure. You're not meant to be a being who's never faced hardship. You're not meant to be this perfect thing. I don't know why we've got, as a society, we've got this perception that to be ascending or to be spiritual, it requires perfection. No, it requires perseverance, but absolutely not perfection. It simply is asking you to face yourself and to understand that perfection, which is really the closest word we can get to it in truth, is harmony. Life doesn't have to be harmonious on the outside. You're living in a crumbling matrix. (laughs) The false matrix is falling apart and it's going to fall at your feet. And guess what? It's going to be messy and uncomfortable. And that's okay. Discomfort will grow you if you let it. 
And if you run away from it, then it's obviously not going to be given that opportunity. So the universe is going to tap you on your shoulder and say, okay, here's a little bit more discomfort. Will you grow now? Mm, not yet. Okay, here's a bit more discomfort. How about now? Okay, look, here's a whole lot more discomfort. Do you see? The universe is going to keep doing this so that you understand that you can walk through discomfort in inner harmony. It's not external harmony that makes you harmonious right? It's inner harmony that allows you to walk through the battlefield, proverbially, of life and not be phased or moved or affected by it, to witness it, to accept it, to allow it. But we're living in a world right now that says, if something's inconvenient, difficult, filled with hardship, it can be a bank balance I don't like, a relationship, a person, a situation, a belief, whatever it is, uh, ill health, there's this belief or this mentality and it's very pervasive and it says, look, just cut it out. You know, there are people referring to the word boundaries. They say, I've got boundaries and because of that, I've cut my parents out of my life or I've cut this person out. There's, there's a craziness going on right now where there's an intention to cut out pain, almost like you can surgically remove it. But here was part of the hard conversation that I had with my online community. For those of you who are in the online community, that's call number 115 that I'm referring to. That's in the Plasma Life Call Library. And I said, anything that you reject in life, you're going to have to reclaim at some point. No, that doesn't mean if you've rejected a person that you have to go and hug them and reclaim them and say, well, you know, OK, fine, we can be friends again. Maybe there's a genuine reason for you. <laughs> See, there's no hard and fast rules. Maybe there's a genuine reason for you. Maybe your physical life was in danger, in which case, hey, congratulations, you, you made a good move. Maybe there was a legitimate reason for you to surgically remove someone from your life, to cut them out, so to speak. And that's okay. But what is it there that you will need to reclaim? Is it a part of yourself? Is it a forgiveness? Is it an acceptance? There's going to be something. Wherever there's rejection, you're going to be called upon to reclaim something. I rejected my name when I was, I'm thinking around about 19, I decided I don't feel like Carrie anymore. So I stopped being Carrie and I started being another name and I lived by that name for two years and I thought I was so clever because now I didn't have to feel the discomfort of my Carriness, of my power. But guess what? My journey in life was to be as very Carrie as I can possibly be. Just like your journey in life is to be as very you as you can possibly be. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So I thought I was being really clever by cutting out something that was making me uncomfortable, not realizing I was rejecting a part of myself. And anything you reject, you're going to have to go and reclaim. So there are things that will make ascension harder. Anything you reject, you got to go and put the work in now, right? Medications that you've been on, antidepressants, anti-anxieties, what have they done? They've helped you to suppress stuff that was difficult and uncomfortable. At some point, that which has been rejected is going to have to be reclaimed. So you're going to have to work harder. That's all. Don't hear me say to you, oh, it's impossible. Don't hear me say to you, oh, you're doomed. Because I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying the warrior in you is going to get called loudly. And you're going to have to remember, my God, I'm an infinite being. I am not doomed. I am not finite. I'm not shopping on Amazon. This is life. And at times it's going to be so painful, uncomfortable, difficult, and I'm going to get excited, and I'm going to run towards it and embrace it. I'm going to rise up and face it. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to bury myself, avoid, resist. First of all, that requires more effort. It's a harder journey, the journey of resistance, and pushing something away, and avoidance. And even distraction. This is a harder journey than the one of connection and facing it. Please remember this. You are a spiritual being and everything is spiritual. Your bank account is spiritual. A lot of people will not like me for saying that. A lot of people will say, what blasphemy, Kerry? Money is not spiritual. Money is the devil. Money is the bad stuff. Everything that you touch, everything that is physical, exists as energy. And you're either going to purify that energy because that's your power. You are here as an alchemist, not here to throw bad energy away, but to take something that has been perhaps corrupted, 
like the false matrix perhaps, and purify it by connecting to it and learning the beautiful art of transcendence. That's what I teach you in my online community. I teach you how to face yourself, how to feel, connect, get real. Step into a level of authenticity and stop running away from life and to get excited for the infinite being that you are. There is nothing more powerful than embracing that which you have always wanted to be and wished to be, but you never thought you could be because you just, you thought somebody else needed to be that for you. Somebody else needs to be the mentor. Somebody else needs to be the guru, the healer, the soothsayer, the teacher. It's you. It's always only ever been you. But humanity got so played down, dumbed down, disconnected from their divinity that they began to believe things like, if it's hard, I'm doomed. If something's difficult, it's over for me. What's the point in trying? See, the email that I received after this straight talk and call, 115, in my online community, the email that I received was from a community member that said, I'm so depressed after hearing you say that this medication that I've put into my body is going to stand in the way of ascension. She said, I'm so depressed. I can understand that. I Imagine if... Just before you go through something difficult, somebody comes to you, taps you on the shoulder and says, this is going to be difficult. (laughs) Everything in you gets triggered and says, oh my God, I don't want to go through it then, right? But sometimes that little voice that's telling you it's difficult is really saying, roll up your sleeves, roll up your sleeves. This is where it gets good. This is where it gets exciting because this is where the true self is born. This is where the true self is birthed. It's in the difficulty that you bring purity and purification, and amplification of your light. Darkness always does this. It never wants to. Never. And it's the bane of darkness's existence. It always becomes the catalyst, the unwitting, unwilling catalyst to light. So all of those hardships are there to bring the warrior that is infinite, that is divine, that is all-knowing, that is the echo of your own soul, to bring that out, right? So this beautiful woman said to me, here I sit with medication that I now feel I shouldn't have taken. I've taken it. Oh my gosh, I'm doomed. And I say to her, just because something is hard doesn't mean you're meant to run. It means you're meant to rise. And that was the inspiration for today's call. But there's more. I want to share something else with you because it got me thinking. And by the way, she emailed me afterwards after we had this little exchange and she was like, yeah, but I I don't know why I doubted myself. Of course I'm doing this, you know? And of course she is, and I knew that, and I felt that. And it's okay to wobble, just so you know. It's okay to lose your balance. It's okay to wobble. It's okay to get discouraged. But when people say, I'm depressed because of the situation, the circumstances, very often what they're saying is, I've given up. Very often what they're saying is, I'm going to just sit in the stagnancy of failure. And I'm not going to bring about my vitality. I'm not going to employ my tenacity. I'm not going to activate the warrior within me because I don't think I can do it. So I'll just sit here waiting for a rescuer or for my doom to come and claim me. That's not who you are. That's not why you came to this planet. You didn't come here waiting for it to end or for somebody to rescue you. You you came here to be the divine warrior that you are. And just because something is difficult doesn't mean that it's not attainable. It just means you got to work harder, right? I have to work harder to detoxify my body from medication for so many years that's been sitting in my body, making it do things that I don't necessarily want it to do. That's okay. It just means I'm going to become so masterful in this particular field. So guess what? It teaches me to breathe consciously. It teaches me the power of breath, which allows me to teach it to you. It allows me to connect with a moment that's dilated, not a moment that's diluted. A moment that is dilated is where time stops and you and I can both step into that stillness together. There are many videos here on YouTube. Type in Kerry K Breathwork or Kerry K Breathing and it'll bring up. uh, There's one called 21 Days of Breathwork. 
what could be called do this for 21 days. It's something along those lines where I'm going to take you through breath. Why, why did I do this? Because I had to become a master of breathing because I couldn't. Hardship creates the master. Don't ever run away from hardship. Don't ever underestimate yourself. So then there's a little bit of confusion. Some people will say, okay, at what point do I stand and fight? <laughs> at no point. You're not here to fight. You're here to stand in your power. And when you do, you are immovable. You are unswayed, unaffected when you stand in your power. You don't have to assert dominance over anyone or anything in order to be powerful. Do you see, we've overthought spirituality. Remember what I said earlier, you are a spiritual thing and everything is spiritual, even your bank account, because everything is energy. Everything is energy. Good energy, bad energy, it's energy. Comfortable, uncomfortable, it's energy. And you are energy. That's why I say everything is spiritual, because spiritual is energy. It's ether. It's spirit. And when you understand that that's your power in the world, it is to be light. Not to eradicate darkness or to cut out darkness. It's to be light in the presence of darkness. And in certain situations in your life, there's a lot of darkness. In other words, a lot of pain. Maybe you've had to face poverty. Maybe you've had to face homelessness or, or ill health or abusive relationships. Whatever it is, these situations in your life were not put there to trip you up. They were there to make, put there to make you fly. Because it was those exact, precise, perfect set of circumstances that was going to elevate you into and transcend you beyond the limited place that you've been in. Put you into the highest possible truth, which allows you then to live your life in the highest possible version. You are so much more powerful, capable of so much more than you think, but stop thinking. <laughs> stop overthinking, overanalyzing. Yes, thoughts all, you're always going to think, there's always going to be thought, there's always going to be the need to categorize, strategize, analyze, that's okay. But don't ever con yourself into thinking that thinking is healing. When you turn each thought into the energetic essence, when you allow that thought to just be deconstructed out of words into energy and feel your thoughts, you will be amazed at how quickly you resolve the places that you've been stuck, the places that you've been overthinking, because it's going to allow you to start feeling and connecting at the level of experience, which is where real grounded embodiment happens. This is very flighty, the head, the brain, the overanalyzing, overthinking. It's very not real. This is where you run away. The overthinking is distraction that helps you to run. To rise is to connect to feel. So when you look at your life and you say, well, this is a hindrance. Either it's going to hinder me from ascending or from happiness. It's going to hinder me from happiness or it's going to hinder me from harmony. See those things with gratitude and excitement. This is the thing you've come to master. This is the thing you've come to transcend. And the tools of transcendence are you, your very body, your very being, your very presence. Bring light home. Be home. Be the light. You've got this. You are living truth louder than you think and capable of so much more than you could ever comprehend. I'll speak to you in the comment section. Please do like this video. Share it with your friends who might need the little pep talk and I really hope that this supports you. Nothing is going to stand between you and ascension when you've devoted yourself and decided that that's your journey. Nothing is going to stand between you and that goal. Who cares if it's hard? Who cares if it's hard? Hardship doesn't mean impossibility. It just means the master is going to be forged. That's it.